today in nerd history. The Joker is the premier villain. He's had so many iconic representations throughout the years, as well as a few that are, you know, less than iconic. But some versions of the Joker are far more messed up than others. Let's take a look at the seven most twisted Joker moments in all of comic book history. And that was eight, but we're only doing seven. Sorry. That was a twisted moment in itself. Number seven, Joker cuts off his own face and wears it as a mask. The Joker has done a lot of heinous things to other people, but rarely has he messed with the man in the mirror. Historically, it's been much easier to get his jollies off by torturing someone else, whether it be Batman or Harley Quinn or any henchman dumb enough to not know that working for the Joker is essentially a terminal illness. Someone at DC might have noticed this aspect of the character, because right when the rebooted New 52 universe kicked off, the Joker cut off his own face and pinned it to a wall. After that, Joker wasn't seen for a while. When he emerged from his self-imposed leave of absence, Joker was wearing his own decomposing face as a mask, with all the sinewy facial tissue clearly visible underneath this fleshy garment. And did the Joker have a dastardly new plan to go along with his new cosmetic surgery? Well, I mean, yes, but the particulars kind of don't matter when you can't stop staring at the flies buzzing around this rotting flesh mask. The nightmarish new look begged the question, why would anyone ever do that to themselves? That's the exact question Joker wants you to ask. If he's willing to mutilate himself just for fun, imagine the horrors he could inflict on someone he doesn't actively like. Though most prominently featured in Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo's epic run on Batman, the most unsettling Joker moment came from Tomasi and Gleason's Batman and Robin. Yep, that's the Joker turning his frown upside down by flipping his maggot-infested face skin around 180 degrees. It's best to just cut off your eyelids now because you're not going to see anything else when you try to sleep tonight. Number six, the Joker is even more twisted as Martha Wayne. If there's anything that comics love more than time travel, it's alternate universes that are caused by time travel. Such was the case for Flashpoint, a huge DC event that eventually gave way to the New 52. This alternate universe imagines a world where Flash's mother never died, and the butterfly effect has caused many massive ripples throughout the time stream. In the Flashpoint reality, Aquaman is at war with Wonder Woman, Superman's baby pod landed in Metropolis, not Smallville, and everyone continues to not care about Cyborg. One of the most notable changes came during that fateful night in Crime Alley. Thomas and Martha Wayne weren't killed in a mugging gone wrong, but instead there was another casualty, little Bruce Wayne. This left a vengeful Thomas Wayne to become an older, grizzled Batman. But Thomas took it pretty well compared to Martha. Distraught over the loss of her son, Martha Wayne goes insane, slashes her face and becomes the Joker. Even though the Thomas Wayne version of Batman is much more likely to murder his enemies with guns, he still has a hard time coming to grips with the idea of killing his former wife, no matter how insane she may be. This new Joker knows this, and uses her power to get away with some pretty sick stuff. She tricked Commissioner Gordon into killing Harvey Dent's daughter, and then slit Gordon's throat. Much has been said about how we should never know the Joker's true origin. By taking away some of that mystery, we make him less frightening. But with Martha, it works. We know that she's lashing out at the world for taking her son, and tormenting her husband for his failure. During the course of the Flashpoint miniseries, which you can also catch as a DTV animated movie, Batman learns that he could restore the past and save Bruce's life. That sounds like a great idea to Martha, until she learns the details. It's touching to see a moment of sanity between Batman and the Joker even in this warped context. But it goes from heart-wrenching to downright creepy when they embrace. To be clear, Batman and the Joker are always about six inches from a hardcore makeout, but it's never happened until now. On one hand, it's nice to see the arch enemies finally consummate their relationships. On the other hand, you know that his tongue probably went through her face holes at some point. Number five, the Joker destroys Superman and Lois Lane. Batman and Superman have teamed up more times than McDonald's and self-loathing, but that about does it for interactions between Gotham City and Metropolis. The rare crossovers that do occur tend to be pretty special, as was the case when Joker decimated Superman without ever even touching him. Compared to his nocturnal counterpart, Superman is kind of an easy target for the Joker. He's less corruptible, but the purity in his spirit also means he's more malleable and naive. Joker took advantage of that vulnerability when he poisoned Lois Lane with a lethal toxin that appeared to be killing her with haste. When confronted by Superman, Joker gave him a classic ultimatum. 
It's an impossible decision for a man who does everything in his power to be a force for good. The classic lose-lose scenario ensures that Superman has to either A, let his loved one die, or B, kill in cold blood, soiling his soul and his cause forever. Thankfully, Batman is there to nudge Superman along the right path. That is, the path Batman chooses. Racked with guilt, Superman decides to let Lois Lane perish rather than kill the Joker. But then, something funny happens. Just as she flatlines, Lois gasps back to life. Apparently, the whole thing is one big gag by the Joker. The toxin was designed to make it look like Lois was dying and then bring her back from the brink. Superman was put through the ringer basically for no reason. That is, because the Joker felt like it. The Man of Steel will have to live the rest of his life knowing that he would have sacrificed the one he loves most in order to protect the world's most ruthless serial killer. And then Lois wakes up and figures out what happened. Now Lois knows that Superman cares more about holding up his moral code than saving her life. Imagine that you were engaged to somebody who was given the opportunity to either shoot Charles Manson in the head or pull your plug, and they picked letting him live. That'd kind of suck, right? little bit? Probably not coincidentally, Lois broke off her engagement with Superman in the very next issue. What seemed like the most ironclad couple in comics was torn apart by the antics of an evil clown. Number four, an all-powerful Joker spends eternity torturing Batman. When it comes down to it, the Joker is just a man. Sure, he's pretty wiry and deceptively quick, but it's not like he has any special powers or anything. And that's a good thing, too, because you don't want to imagine what he would do with any kind of supernatural ability. Rather, you don't have to imagine, because we got to see it in the Emperor Joker storyline. The arc kicks off when the omnipotent Mr. Mixoplick is tricked into giving the Joker almost all of his phenomenal cosmic powers. With his immense capabilities, the newly christened prankster god makes quick work of the universe, bending everything to his whim. Joker kills everyone in China just to make a Chinese food joke. Though, to be fair, he does stop short of complaining that he'll be hungry again in half an hour. With this unlimited power, Joker should have no problem killing his arch nemesis, and he does over and over and over again. Batman suffers at the hands of his tormentor repeatedly, dying and coming back to life every day, only to be subjected to some new and terrible horror. It's a tragic fate straight out of Greek mythology, except in this case, the Joker is Zeus, and he's turned the rest of the gods into delicious euros. Even worse, Superman watches it all happen, helpless to do anything, while his friend is eaten alive by a wake of vultures. That's one of the tamer torture methods depicted in the story. When Supes originally found Batman, he was being dragged into a grave by zombie clowns, only to emerge from the ground and being pulled down to the dirt yet again. This kind of living hell is more than any man can endure, even the Dark Knight. So broken was the bat after all was said and done that Superman had to take Batman's memories unto himself to save his friend. It's an incredible thing to do for someone, and Superman won't ever tell anyone. I guess Batman really doesn't know everything. Number three, Joker puts Commissioner Gordon to the test in No Man's Land. A classic arc, Batman No Man's Land, is centered on a cataclysmic earthquake that shook Gotham City to its core. Declared a lost cause and officially cut off from the United States, Gotham quickly descended into a crap fest of crime straight out of Escape from New York, or, uh, The Dark Knight Rises, I mean. As you might imagine, this kind of worst case scenario is basically what Joker masturbates to in the corner of his Arkham cell, so he wasted no time in kidnapping a hospital's worth of infants. Sarah Essen, second wife to Commissioner Gordon, found the Joker and dared to confront him alone. But Joker knew that any good person's gonna put down their gun if you throw a baby at them. Could she have let the baby fall and shot Joker, ending his reign of terror and presumably saving thousands of lives in the future? Yes, but Joker knew that you catch a goddamn baby if someone throws it at you, and he took that opportunity to shoot poor Sarah right then and there, leaving the gaggle of babies to wallow in her blood. The Joker is caught, and the babies are saved, because duh. And Commissioner Gordon has an intense confrontation with the man who killed his wife, not to mention the same guy who crippled his daughter. No one could blame this dude for blowing the Joker away. If anyone decided to do it at this point, they'd be doing the world a favor. But Gordon takes the high road and settles for a good kneecapping. That's just the thing, though. If Gordon had shot an unarmed Joker, he would have forsaken all of his principles and sunk into the level of that scum. Joker wins. But since Gordon didn't go for the kill, Joker is essentially punished with an extended but certainly temporary stay at Casa de Arkham, and will almost certainly go on to kill more innocents. Joker wins again. 
No matter what happens, the Joker always has the upper hand. He enjoys putting people through hell because there's no way that he cannot win. That's what's so funny to him. Number two, the constant, unending abuse of Harley Quinn. The Joker and Harley Quinn are one of the most revered couples in comics, but the screwed up part is that they're not really a couple at all. Relationships are usually founded on mutual adoration and respect. While Harley is infatuated to the point of obsession, her puddin has never felt the same way. Any affection the Joker does show Harley is merely a means of manipulating her. Even in the kindest interpretation of their relationship, Joker is still unable or unwilling to care about Harley. His true love is Batman and every time she demonstrates an inability to understand that, he punishes her. Over the years, their relationship has only worsened. It was never healthy, but it's gotten to the point where now Joker never does anything that isn't just mean or cruel to Harley. It's not just verbal abuse, either. On several occasions, Joker has taken out his rage on Harley in a physical manner. In one case, he even shot her and left her for dead. It got even more messed up when the Joker went through his aforementioned face mask phase. The idea being, in the rebooted New 52 comic verse, they wanted a nastier, meaner Joker. And that means he got to punch Harley in the face whenever he felt like it. It's not really fun anymore. It's not Harley trying to get the Joker to rev her up and getting pushed over a table. Uh, it's just kind of terrible. It already resembled a real-life abusive relationship to a startling degree, and since then Joker has taken it up a notch. It wasn't long after her face punch that Joker shackled up Harley in a pit filled with human skeletons, the remains of which he claimed all belonged to previous Harleys. He told her that this is where all of his would-be sidekicks end up, that she's in no way special, and has always been expendable. Joker was probably just messing with Harley here, but that makes it worse. He went through all the trouble of gathering these dead bodies, or making some of them himself, going to Joanne Fabrics and picking out the exact right shade of Harley's clothes, dressing up the skeletons and laying them about and preparing a torture chamber to look aged, all to screw with his most loyal minion for no other reason other than it'd be a good laugh. Harley's feelings for the Joker have wavered now and again, and there have been even a few times that she's left him, but she always seems to find her way back to Mr. J. One time, Joker got sick of his sidekick and locked her in a rocket and lit the fuse. After escaping, Harley confronted Joker. He simply apologized, and all was forgiven. The Joker has killed thousands of people across hundreds of stories, but the fact that he lets Harley Quinn keep living such a miserable existence counts among his very worst deeds. Finally, number one, the Joker finally gets Batman to kill him. Batman can't ever kill the Joker, mainly because it would mean the end of one of the most celebrated rivalries in all of comics. But the in-universe reasoning is pretty simple. If Batman kills the Joker, he erases the line between them. He becomes a vigilante who executes street justice, instead of someone who uh, just, you know, paralyzes bad people. That's not to say that Batman has never wanted to kill the Joker. He probably thinks about it all the time and has a secret Pinterest board dedicated to the dozens of ways he'd eviscerate his worst foe. All I've ever wanted to do is kill him. A day doesn't go by when I don't think about subjecting him to every horrendous torture he's dealt out to others and then end him. But no matter what happens, there's this vibrating void between the two of them that prevents Batman from ending it. They're like two magnets that are repelling each other. Maybe they want to kiss. They're not going to kiss. Maybe they will. Part of the fun of comics is that you could pretty quickly and easily tell a story that happens outside the established canonical world. And there, we can explore what would happen if Batman actually did kill the Joker. The comic JLA The Nail imagines what a Justice League might be without Superman. Lacking a moral compass, the League descends into chaos, and when Batgirl and Robin are murdered, Batman loses control and kills the Joker. As it so happens, he does it right in front of the media, which is Batman and the League's worst nightmare. When everyone sees that Batman is a murderer, he loses all credibility as a symbol for justice. Some Batmans don't see it this way. I'm, I'm sorry, the, the plural is Batsman. Earth 2 Batman straight up shoots the Joker the first time he gets a chance. Earth 2 Batman is also Thomas Wayne, but still a little bit different than Flashpoint Batman. In this case, both Bruce and Thomas survived the initial attack and Martha died. Bruce lived on to become Batman, but died saving the world. And so Thomas took on his son's place to avenge his kin. Earth 2 Batman wipes out the Joker, but in doing so becomes a different hero altogether, more in line with the Punisher than his own son. In some of these alternate universe stories, killing the Joker makes a little more sense. Wouldn't pirate Batman just straight up stab the Joker like the scurvy dog he is? 
Yeah, <laughs> he would. Vampire Batman is also a little bit different. Infected with vampirism after a battle with Dracula, Batman is left to stalk the Gotham streets as a nocturnal bloodsucker. For a while, he resists his urges, instead feeding on rats. As an unsoiled vampire that is yet to consume human blood, he was immune to things like crosses and holy water. But eventually, Vampire Batman gave into his temptation and murdered the Joker by sucking him dry, staking him just to make sure the bastard stayed down. You'll notice in a lot of these kill shots that Joker is smiling, even during his last breath. Even as he's impaled through the heart, Joker knows that he's corrupted Batman. The foul blood of his enemy now courses through Batman's veins, giving him an insatiable hunger. Since he's killed Joker, there's nothing stopping him from killing anyone else who crosses him the wrong way. That's more or less what happens for any Batman that kills. Often giving into that dark desire and ending the Joker just means giving him what he wants something that has grave consequences. Like the time that Batman killed the Joker in the Injustice comic. Okay, okay, okay. That's technically just a dream sequence. In the real story, Superman is the one that kills Joker. Pushed to the brink when Joker tricked him into killing a pregnant Lois Lane, Superman eviscerated Joker and started down a dark fascist path that gives the Injustice game its dystopian setting. It's a horrible universe to live in and one that the Joker would have loved. When you kill the Joker, you can still hear him laughing in hell. 